People with Asperger's syndrome are quite frankly too trusting by and large. Now, that is the first of six reasons why people with Asperger's syndrome are often chosen as targets by toxic people, those who are narcissistic in particular. Now, this idea for this video came to me late last night. Okay, we're talking maybe six hours ago. I don't know where it came from. But I was just thinking about this. Why is it that we, in particular, empaths, uh, Aspies, are so vulnerable to toxic people? And one of those reasons, the first of the reasons, and by the way, if you can think of some that I didn't think of, be sure to tell us in the uh, comment section. But uh, the first one is that we just tend to be too trusting. We see the world, well, first of all, we see the world in order. We like things to be in order, and if they're not in order, we put them in order, or we're bothered by it. But we see the world as being organized into two groups of people, those who are good and those who are bad, black and white. There's not a whole lot of room for anything in the middle. Now, cognitively, we know that's not true, but there's something innate about us that it just comes through and dispels anything that is rational. That's just the way we see it. Everything is in order. Now, it's not only that we have two groups, good guys, bad guys, black hat uh, or white hat versus black hat, but um, we seem to think that the white hats, the good guys, outnumber the bad guys like 10 to 1 or maybe 100 to 1. You know, I talked about this in another video, but those old TV westerns you may have seen back in the day, um, you can find them on YouTube still, that... Uh, the bad guys were obvious. Now, some of them were slicksters, but by and large, they were the bullies in the saloon. They were the guys who robbed the bank. They had a, they had a place. They stayed outside of town. Um, and it was just everyone in town were the good guys. By and large, that was a typical, typical plot, the template of the typical movie or the TV show. And you see that, and that's the way you see the world. Everybody's good. There are some bad guys, but uh, they're so obvious, you pick them out. Okay. Now, because we have that weird outlook on the world, what happens is that um, we assume the bad guys are good guys because they just come across as good guys. And they do that on purpose. They do that by design. But we don't have that perception that a lot of people have, most people have, that neurotypical perception that this individual has something something wrong with him or maybe we just don't have the good sense to understand and we don't have the good sense to understand like most people do to understand that not everybody is 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 a good person just because they act that way just because they present themselves that way so we just accept everything on its surface, by the way, by the way, these guys present themselves, that makes us terribly, terribly, terribly um, vulnerable to uh, toxic people, to narcissistic people. Number two is this: we tend to have a what I would call a shallow network support or support network, I should say. Most people have a deep set of friends. Um, to varying degrees. Some people may have a lot of friends. Some people may have a few friends. Some people may be somewhere in between, but they have a circle of friends. They have a network. And they just accumulate friends naturally. Now, these may, may not be really good friends. Maybe these aren't people who would loan them $100 at the drop of a hat, but uh, still, they're friends. You know, they're people to hang out with if they go to school, they go to work, uh, they go to church. Uh, wherever they happen to be, they have this group of people that uh, they feel comfortable associating with, and those other people feel comfortable associating with them. That's their network. That's their friends. That's their social circle. But people with Asperger's syndrome have a very small social circle. Sometimes it is uh, no bigger than their immediate family. Very typical of people with Asperger's syndrome. So because of that, when we are under attack, by toxic people, by narcissists, we have nobody to turn to. And the, the toxic people see that, and they see that we have that shallow, shallow, shallow network of friends. 
And when they attack us, who are we going to turn to? Who are we going to seek help from? Who's going to come support us? Who's going to come defend us? Well, we have ourselves to support ourselves, and we have ourselves to defend ourselves, and the narcissist understands that that's sometimes not enough. So that is the second reason that we are often targeted by narcissists, by toxic people. Number three is we tend to be passive by nature. And I say that because empaths and people with Asperger's syndrome, Aspies, it just doesn't make sense. Um, aggression just doesn't make sense. Why would somebody be mean to somebody else for no apparent reason? It just doesn't make sense. It's not logical. It's not reasonable. We read about in history where people would kill other people because they disagreed with their religion. Okay, they still do that today, I guess. But we see that people hate other people because they belong to a different political party or because they have a different ideology. That's so stupid. Why would you hate somebody just because they disagree with you? Can't we disagree with people without lopping their heads off? I mean, it seems to me perfectly reasonable that we would say, okay, we disagree, you go your way, and uh, I'll go my way. Okay, so the, the um, toxic individual, the narcissist, will see that behavior, that uh, we tend to be passive people. Now, there are some, um, some of these people, some narcissists, uh, some psychopaths, who can actually sense that we are not aggressive, that we are not particularly defensive, just by the way we handle ourselves, by our body language. I think it was Ted Bundy, if I remember right, who said he would choose his victims, who were always female college students, he would choose his victims by the way they walked, just by the way they carried themselves. There was something about their body language that he picked up on. And that seems to be the norm for most narcissists, for most psychopaths, for most toxic people. So we apparently carry ourselves differently. Now, I don't know how to fix that. I mean, what do you do? Kind of walk around like John Wayne or whatever? Uh, I don't know. Do you uh, just once in a while just blurt out with, uh, with profanity so everybody knows you're the bad guy? Or uh, I, I can't do that. I mean, that's just not me. So one of the reasons, the third reason, again, that uh, we are often targeted by narcissists, by toxic people is because just our nature to be passive and they pick up on that we're not going to defend ourselves or we're less likely to defend ourselves number four and uh, this i find is being um, particularly important is we tend to be confused abuse could be physical abuse it could be emotional abuse it could be social rejection it could be neglect and so on but abuse to an Aspie is confusing. Now, this is kind of like argumentation, but abuse in all of its forms seems to be confusing because it's nonsensical. Why would you abuse somebody? There's no reason, no logical, rational, cognitive reason to do that. Well, to the empath, or not to the empath, but to the toxic person, to the narcissist, there is very good reason to attack people. Just like people who... Um, or alcoholics think there's a very good reason to drink alcohol because it makes them, gives them a sense of pleasure. It triggers their dopamine. That doesn't make sense to me, but apparently it makes sense to them or they wouldn't do it. Same thing is true of uh, psychopaths. Same thing is true of toxic people. They abuse other people because it makes them feel good. Same reason people eat chocolate cake, I guess. It's just their, their dessert in life. And they're gluttons. They love it. They're, they're, uh, when it comes to ego, they're just obese. Ego obesity. And they crave it. They have to abuse people just to lift themselves up and give them that good feeling that they are. They are extremely important. So we, we find that very confusing because it just doesn't make sense. It's just dumb, you know. You don't abuse people because eh, it makes me feel good. But a lot of people do. But we don't see that. And narcissists, toxic people, see that we don't see that. And that is a, uh, that's an opening. You know, it says, this guy doesn't get it. 
this individual, this person with Aspie syndrome, Asperger syndrome, doesn't get it, doesn't understand it. Therefore, this person is vulnerable. You can take advantage of this person. You can hurt this person. So we find ourselves being abused. Sometimes it's physical abuse. Some uh, women in particular uh, suffer physical abuse. Sometimes it's just neglect. Sometimes it's being socially isolated. Sometimes it's uh, a rejection. You know, the, the list goes on and on. But one more time, they just enjoy abusing people. But they enjoy abusing people who don't fight back. And those of us who don't get it, it just the whole thing is kind of confusing. We're less likely to fight back. Number five is this. We tend to lack innate defense skills. Now, I've mentioned this on previous videos, but Aspies tend to be confused in the social settings. We don't really get what's going on. Uh, there's a framework that is the ability to engage in social interaction and within that network of uh, that, that's those skill sets of functioning socially one of those skills is the ability to fight with other people and i observe this over my life and i'm like 70 years old and nearly 70 years old and life is my laboratory and i go back and draw on my experiences and things that I've read, things that I've studied, but this is one of those things I experienced, is in the workplace, I would notice that uh, these people somehow, some way, got along with each other. I didn't understand that. I mean, how do you do that? How do you engage in conversation with a group of people? They just come second nature to them. They just do it. I don't get it. It's kind of like a blind person not understanding what color is. It just, there, there, there's no point of reference. You just don't get it. But what I was saying is there is one of the skills in their skill set, amazingly, is their ability to fight each other. They know how to, I was, I'd watch these people in their social networking, and one person would have a disagreement with another person, and they had this thing of tit for tat, they go back and forth, and they, they knew how to fight each other. That was so odd to me. Why are, you know, why are they even fighting? There's nothing to fight about. You know, one guy has his ego, and the other person has his ego, and I guess they... They clash. They have an ego clash, and so they fight it out, call each other names, yell at each other, and you know, uh, we don't have that. Maybe we do to some extent. But those innate defense skills, or we could say those fight skills, they they just not natural to us. Or if they are there, they're not as uh, we're not as attuned to them, and we're not as good at uh, using them. I mean, yeah, you can throw a ball, but can you throw a baseball? Uh, in a ball game and you know strike the guy out there's a huge difference we may have that skill to a very small degree but it's not there where it's proficient enough to see us defend ourselves from what do you call these people I call them bullies i guess number six is this we just uh, people with asperger syndrome are just perceived as weird we're just different now one thing psychologists know is that uh, people tend to group together with individuals who are like themselves. The way that I say that, I prefer to say that, is uh, we like those who are like us. There have been numerous tests done uh, using uh, brain scanners where they would, they would demonstrate this. There was one test I was reading about in which I think it was, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name, Robert Sapolsky, had this in his book, and uh, they were given a brain, uh, they, uh, uh, what do you call it, a brain scan, brain test, whatever, to individuals, but they were monitoring their brain, and as they were monitoring their brains, they would show them images of people being poked with a pen. And when they did that, what would happen is a part of their brain that lights up when the subject experiences pain would light up when they saw other people experiencing the pain of being poked with a pen. Then they noticed that if the person being poked with a pen, you know, the image was a different person, different kind of person. In other words, their skin color was different from the subject who is having his brain scanned. Well, that part of his brain would still light up, but it wasn't as intense 
And that is because we have more empathy for people who are like us than we do for those who are different. And guess what? People with Asperger's syndrome are different. So when we get poked with a pen, you can't see it in our skin tone, but uh, you can see it. It's obvious in most of us. Their brain just doesn't light up. When we are in pain, hurting, other people are just not as empathetic toward us as they are for neurotypical people. That's the way the world works. If you see those rectangles on your screen, this goes on and on. We have so much more to talk about, so just click on one of those uh, rectangles and hear more of this.